Amon Gazi and Luke Belmar being mm -hmm. kind of the two guys who really blew up because of short form mass production of mm -hmm. content. You know, what's the reason that they've been able to crack the code and scale and there hasn't really been that many other people have, who've done it and followed suit yet? It's because they're doing it internally and they own the team. They have full control over the process. So many other people have tried to do it the same route that Andrew Tate did through an affiliate network, just building like a Discord community, having people create these secondary accounts and then incentivizing them through affiliate commissions. And there's not, we have talked to a lot of people who have tried that strategy and failed. And there's just a graveyard of all these secondary accounts that were created and run for one week, two weeks, and then kids and editors overseas didn't see any money come from it, so they gave up, right? And so it's a short-term cycle that hasn't worked for anyone else. When it comes to Iman and Luke Belmore, they have all their editors internal creating these edits, cranking it out, there's predictability behind that. They're putting their own money, their own resources to make this happen versus trying to go an affiliate model approach. Welcome to the Mindful Leaders Podcast. My name is Dylan Vaness, and today we have a amazing guest on named Logan Forsyth. Now, Logan created an agency that's actually helping influencers, creators, business owners mass create content at scale. And we all know that content, social media, and being out there online really is critical to business success in today's age. And Logan has actually mastered the art of not just creating content as an agency, but actually creating massive amounts of content where they're doing thousands of posts for their clients every single month. So if you're a creator, a business owner, or someone just looking at how to actually create content at scale, you're gonna love and learn a lot from this episode. I was asking on Amon Gazi and Luke Belmar being mm -hmm. kind of the two guys who mastered uh, really blew up because of short form mass production of mm -hmm. content. And uh, you're, this is your world, right? Like mm -hmm. you live in it. So, yep. you know, what's the reason that they've been able to crack the code and scale? And there hasn't really been that many other people have, who've done it and followed suit yet. Mm -hmm. It's because they're doing it internally and they own the team. They have full control over the process. So many other people have tried to do it the same route that Andrew Tate did through an affiliate network, just building like a Discord community, having people create these secondary accounts and then incentivizing them through affiliate commissions. And there's not, we have talked to a lot of people who have tried that strategy and failed. And there's just a graveyard of all these secondary accounts that were created and run for one week, two weeks, and then kids and editors overseas didn't see any money come from it, so they gave up, right? And so it's a short-term cycle that hasn't worked for anyone else. And so when it comes to Iman and Luke Belmore, they have all their editors internal creating these edits, cranking it out, there's predictability behind that. They're putting their own money, their own resources to make this happen versus trying to go an affiliate model approach. Mm, okay. So, you know, with you, tell me a little bit about how you tapped into this and, and what you're actually doing for brands you work with. Yeah. So uh, the story of media scaling and what we do is work with top personal brands, podcast creators. We guarantee up to 150 million real organic views in the first 90 days working with us. And uh, the way that we do that is through what we call secondary accounts. So we'll go in with a top creator. If you're gonna get our top level guarantee, we say up to because it can vary in a range. Usually we're between 30 million to 150 million, depending on factors such as where you're starting with your socials, how much content you have, what your audience size is. We also have different tiers of packages. So our higher tier package is gonna give you a higher guarantee as well. Um, and we do this through, again, what we call secondary accounts. So an example would be like, we're talking about, uh, Let's use Tony Robbins. Everyone knows him. It'd be like Tony Robbins Reels, Tony Robbins Clips, Best of Tony Robbins, so on and so forth. We create these accounts across platforms, and it allows us to do incredibly high volumes of short-form content. So we'll work with people who have been creating content for a long period of time, usually long-form, and dedicate an entire team of editors and account managers, go in, clip up their content into very high volume of top-quality short-form clips, and then we're posting between 1,800 to 4,200 times per month per client wow. starting. And doing that level of posting volume uh, with top quality content inevitably creates a lot of reach. Posts will go viral. We take all that new exposure, new reach, and funnel it back to their main socials and any other offers that they're focused on as well. So that's really uh, like the company and what we do. How it came to be is uh, I've been in the space of working with larger personal brands uh, for a while now. And then my partner on the company, Spencer Murphy, has as well. We grew up together and have known each other since we were nine years old. Uh, and just best friends throughout the whole process. And Spencer um, worked internally with Iman Gazi. They started back in July of 2022. 
and they came together. Iman was wanting to build the Andrew Tate strategy internally and in-house for himself. And Spencer was the guy who built out that entire division, led the team, obviously collaborated with the rest of the team as well. Uh, but Spencer, prior to that, worked with Jason Capital for over four years and had just, they had already done like 100 million plus views per month working with you as well um, through that process and had a lot of assets and systems in place. So Spencer was able to take those systems, apply it to uh, the secondary account network that was built with Iman, and then just evolve it on top, make it happen, hired full team of editors, account managers, et cetera. And in the first four months, they generated uh, actually, f yeah, first four months, they generated 449 million views. For and Amon? For um, Amon, yeah. And uh, so Spencer was in Los Angeles staying with me at my house. And this was when he was still working for Amon and told me the view count that they had generated in that time. And ca casually was like, yeah, we generated over 500 million views in like the first few months. And I was like, wait, what? It was like, how many views? What did you say? It, I was like shocked because it's a massive number, you know, like two, the Super Bowl gets at its peak 98 million views is what they say. And advertisers will pay six to seven million dollars for a 30 second ad placement to capitalize on those views, assuming that all of them are watching, which they're not cut it in half. So there's so much value in having a machine and really a vehicle that can get that amount of exposure for you. Right. So it just like planted a seed in my head and. Spencer was uh, at a point to where he was ready to go out on his own, start an agency. Um, I was in a similar place to where we came together and uh, built the game plan of, hey, let's go to the top. Let's find other people who are like Iman and like um, Andrew Tate and like other people who already have large followings, established account, like a lot of content. And let's go in and just amplify it and build a secondary network for them and then back it up with a huge guarantee of 150 million views to break through the noise. And that's what we did. Dude, I love it, man. That's crazy. Dude, that interesting thing is like your, your, your client list. Like when did you start the agency? So Media Scaling launched officially. We started building it in February of 2023. And then we officially went to market in March of 2023. Okay. So, dude, we're less than a year in. Yeah. And you work with like, I would say like in the industry kind of we live in, which is like, you know, this like brands and coaching and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Dude, you work with like all, all the main players. How have you made, who are some of these people that you've been able to work with and, and what are the reasons, like, how did you land these crazy clients? Yeah, definitely. So, um, our first client was Greg O'Gallagher. We worked with like Brandon Carter, uh, Ryan Pineda, uh, dropouts podcast is someone who's like cranking and taking off right now. Uh, Michael Sartain is another client and, uh, we have been able to work with them. We also have NDAs with some awesome clients that I can't speak on, but, uh, we've been able to work with them, um, through having such a great offer is really what it comes down to, right? Like we were able to tie in and guarantee people up to 150 million views. Uh, a large part of that is averaging, uh, our most average guarantee is 100 million views in 90 days. And so that's what we would lead with. And then we just grew initially through cold email outreach and referral partners. We'd also combined with me and Spencer, been in the space long enough to where we had a lot of connections, we're able to get introductions, um, so like Greg O'Gallagher was our first client. We were referred over to him through a mutual connection. Uh, but a lot of it was just through cold email outreach as well. Uh, we used a tool like Apollo.io and just VAs to scrape emails of creators, put together what we called our dream 1000 list of the top people that we'd want to work with who were a good fit for the strategy, found all their emails and then just put together campaigns and started the subject line would be like hundred million views guaranteed in 90 days. And it just broke through the noise, got opens and, these are people who uh, have, you know, hundreds of emails being sent to them every day, if not more. And we would consistently get feedback like, man, I get a lot of emails. I don't open any of them. This is interesting. Let's talk, you know, and then we just hop on the phone and the offer would back it up. We had results already to prove that we were able to do what we were talking about. And we found ourselves in an amazing position uh, because the market awareness is there behind our strategy of this process of building secondary accounts and just flooding the social platforms with your content and creating so much new reach and exposure to where everyone's seen it happen at this point with people like at the start, Andrew Tate, and then Iman really came in and then Luke Belmar. And now uh, our clients and other people are taking advantage. Um, but the awareness is there, uh, but the knowledge of how to do it yourself is not, right? And so that's something that we've like cracked the code on and been able to tap into. And we're the only agency that I'm aware of that has the guarantee size that we do and also the track record that we do to come in to where it's a no brainer 
uh, for a lot of clients when they fit the criteria that we look for um, to just take their socials and audience and just growth to the next level. Mm. Dude, that's amazing. You know, really, uh, I've been in the agency space for uh, for you know almost seven years now, and I've worked with I have a agency a coaching program called Agency Box. We've worked with like seven thousand or sorry five thousand agencies, awesome. uh, and I've seen agencies go from zero dollars, some doing a million dollars in the first let's say ninety days, but mm-hmm. I haven't seen someone who's been able to crack the code on product offer client acquisition and getting amazing clients like you have in such a short period of time. So, dude, huge, huge applaud to you and oh, thank you. and uh, and definitely impressive what you've been able to do. Thank you. So, flash forward to before last year when you were. Uh, before you started this agency, what were you mm-hmm. doing with yourself? Like, what the heck were you doing? Were you like surfing on a beach in California? Yeah. <laughs> or what, what was pre-agency world? Yeah. Uh, so I've been in the agency digital marketing space for some time now. I started uh, when I was 18 and I'm now 26. Um, so eight years in. And I had uh, my own agency prior and had invested into a lot of communities and masterminds, et cetera. Um, and through mutual, actually it was Jason Capital, uh, got connected with Manny Koshman, who is known for his car collection. It's incredible, world class. Uh, his Bugattis, McLarens, Paganis, et cetera, just like one off, like beautiful, beautiful cars. And he made his money investing in commercial real estate. Uh, Jason connected me with Manny. Manny was looking for someone to come in and help scale and build his coaching company, teaching others how to invest in commercial real estate. Um, so that moved me from Texas out to California and then worked with Manny Koshman directly for over two years building his coaching e-learning company. Um, and that was really my big jump into the realm of working with like top brands. And he already had at that point, I think he probably had a collective following of like 4 million, 5 million followers across the board. Um, so I had an incredible advantage to start with, right? And then just helped scale that to the next level and, and learn so much about the game of building a coaching company behind a personal brand and uh, rolling out e-learning, building a mastermind, going the high ticket route, um, et cetera. So I did that for a little over two years. And uh, then through that process, I attended, um, you know, hundreds of calls and listened to Manny get asked 10,000 plus questions about commercial real estate. And it got to the point, I knew all the answers to all the questions. And I was like, you know what? I think I have what it takes. Like, let's go out. Let's start looking at uh, investing into commercial real estate. Through that process as well, I met someone uh, and just different people with heavy capital behind them. And um, so I moved on and went and pursued that full time for about nine months. And just the timing just was not great. The same time that happened was when interest rates started rapidly rising. And in the commercial real estate space, just real estate in general, uh, when interest rates rise, the cost of money rises, right? And there's something called underwriting when it comes to just crunching the numbers on a property and seeing if it makes sense from a profit and loss standpoint, the projections behind it, et cetera. Long story short, we're looking at what's called value add real estate, which is when it's distressed and has maybe it hasn't been taken care of. There's less occupancy in the building, et cetera. So you can go in, add value to it, flip it in three to five years and make multiple seven, even eight figures, depending on the property size. Um, not to spend too much time, but uh, I looked at thousands of deals, connected with hundreds and hundreds of brokers, sourced a lot of off market opportunities, had big capital partners behind me and uh, just could not have a deal crunch out. And so I wasn't seeing a light at the end of the tunnel during that phase. And that's when Spencer uh, was looking to start his own agency. And I was looking to make a pivot. I was just living off my savings, burning through cash. And, um, you know, the timing just worked out perfect. And that's when we came together, started media scaling. Mm. Nice, man. Very cool. You know, the interesting thing with what you're in, you have, so the core things of, of agency success, one, client acquisition uh, machine, two, guaranteed offer, and three, good fulfillment systems. Mm-hmm. And uh, what you're trying to do uh, um, is something I, I actually tried to create a system to create, to, to produce content at scale and mm-hmm. deploy it at scale. And uh, I saw this when Amon did it, and then I started seeing Luke do it. And I tried to crack the code on it. And dude, I ran into issue after issue after issue mm. after issue. It's not easy. To the point where I was like, it's not even worth it at this point. I'm mm. like, and I, I said to my uh, my business partner, I said, dude, someone's going to figure this out. Someone's going to figure out how to create content at scale. Uh, <laughs> uh, it'd be cool if it was us. But at the same time, like we're, we're so dialed in with what we're doing. Like, mm. I don't have the capacity for it. But I'd love to kind of talk through some of the issues we faced and hear if you, you know, you face those and kind of how you, you don't have to necessarily tell us the secrets on how you're doing it. I understand mm-hmm. that there's, you know, IP with that, but kind of what you do when you're faced with these problems from a decision sure. making perspective. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, dude, some of the major things is, so I understand that when you're creating content for clients, you're doing anywhere from 
you said, like you said, 2,000 to 5,000 posts per month. Mm -hmm. You're creating what, like upward to 20 accounts per client? Yeah, 20 to 40 accounts usually to start, and then it'll grow from there. Okay, so uh, number one, account shutdown issues. Mm -hmm. That's a major issue. Like, like you know, for example, with TikTok, right? They make you put phone numbers on. You have to verify the phone number. Mm -hmm. You log in with Instagram. Instagram all of a sudden says you're you're ban you're you're against you're going against the terms of service. Mm -hmm. What are you doing to counteract those things? And and how do you have team members in place that their job is just to do that kind of stuff? Yeah, we have a full process that we follow for account creation and warm up. We usually will create the account. Um, we always make sure that our accounts are created by team members that are based in the U.S. as well to give it that IP. And then we will uh, post, like not post, but we'll add content into the schedulers or draft posts to show intent to use that account. And then we'll usually start posting on it about three days, four days later. Um, there's a lot of parameters that we put in place to where we make it very apparent that these are secondary accounts and not like trying to impersonate someone. And so it'll be like fan page, we'll be tagging the main creator versus a lot of these scam accounts that are created as impersonation accounts. They take the same exact profile pictures, same exact bio, same exact content, et cetera. Um, and then we also uh, just don't put and create all the accounts like literally back to back to back to back at the same time, which a lot of people will try and do. We spread it out over the course of a few days, maybe uh, different devices, different IPs that are creating the accounts as well, um, just so it's not all linked into one area. And uh, we generally see success with that process. It is pretty typical at the start of creating the secondary accounts to where a portion of them will get flagged and taken down, but you can appeal it. And we have a template that we use for our appeals. 99% of the time it gets approved right back up right away. Mm. Um, a big part of it is it is a problem across all social platforms of a lot of spam and impersonation accounts of creators. So the algorithm has different uh, metrics that it's been put in place to help avoid that happening. Um, however, when you submit an appeal, um, you know someone manually will review it and we always just get it right back approved. Uh, and then once that's in place, we're usually good to go. We've only had a couple of circumstances to where an account has randomly gotten taken down later on um, and we haven't been able to get it back, but that's been incredibly rare out of looking at the total amount of accounts that we've managed at this point. And um, usually it's just in that early like setup stage process and we'll appeal the ones that do get shut down. Mm, got it. Now, are, are you, do you have, in order to do something efficient, typically you'd see companies like you hiring uh, people overseas to make it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, in that process, are you, use, you guys using VPNs to make it look like the posting's happening in, in the US or do you think that even matters? No, so we've actually tested this pretty extensively. When Spencer was working with Iman, they had, I think, around like six account managers. They were all overseas and they had quality demographics. When we started media scaling, our first eight to 10 or so account managers were all US based to ensure we wanted all of our clients were based in the US. Now we're starting to work with more people in like Europe and Australia, et cetera, as well. Uh, but we wanted to ensure if our client was based in the US, that we got bulk US views followed by Canada, Australia, the UK. And um, then with that knowledge in place of like when Spencer was working with Iman, their accounts were overseas, they still saw great views. We we're like, you know what, let's just test if we hire an overseas account manager to come in, take over, manage uh, like new, new accounts still created from scratch. Let's see what happens with the demographics. And we did, and the demographics were exactly the same. Like not even using a VPN, not using anything. Uh, we just, again, we'll create the account in the US first, and then we'll have an overseas account manager come in, take it over, run the process. And uh, so we started with one account manager and then we hired another and then another overseas. And we continued to see still the same type of geographics across the accounts. Uh, the theory behind it is that algorithm, the algorithm on every platform is like scary good at this point, it has hundreds of thousands of data points, knows us better than we know ourselves. And it knows who's in the content, who's speaking, like the, and the audience and the geographics that have already been built by that persona. And so usually the geographics of our clients, like main socials, are fairly similar to the ones in the secondary accounts, regardless of where the account managers are based. Uh, and then what we found as well is we still pay the same rate to hire our overseas account managers. We don't like skimp out and try and save costs there. And that allows us to hire top, top talent. Like we have killers in the company who are account managers overseas who are making really great money. Um, for what we were paying our US-based account managers for as well. So we have a mix of both in the company, uh, but we don't skimp costs there and we just hire top talent and see better results doing that. Mm, dude, it makes sense. And you know, with that, right, like I've seen a lot of people doing, uh, there's this whole kind of uh, idea about, I'd say purchasing clout, 
right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. people go out and they want to buy followers. They want to buy engagement. Oh, yeah. They want to boost their stuff because there's this idea of fake it till you make it. And, mm-hmm. and uh, what's your belief around that? And do you think that engagement boosting and this kind of stuff affects mm-hmm. the actual impact the account has? Yeah, it does. I mean, it's really vanity metrics. And um, at the end of the day, from what we see, and a lot of time it can hurt accounts uh, because if it's like a bunch of bot accounts or fake followers, a lot of those will be deleted over time. It dramatically decreases your engagement rate unless you're like staying in um, engagement groups, et cetera. So we have seen it negatively affect accounts and we'll recommend with clients, especially in Instagram, there's a huge wave of a lot of people doing like shout outs early on, et cetera. And unfortunately, a lot of people had like a lot of fake followers come through that process as well. Um, so what we do is ju- is fully organic, fully legit. And if you just follow the great principles, you post high volume, you have great quality content, you're using great hooks in your content, you are you have a brand identity to where you're speaking f- to the right people and getting in front of the right people as well. It's not just views on a screen, but people who you want to be talking to. Um, then you can like build out of that and build a organic like quality audience, but you can see just the difference in community of someone who has like paid for a following and uh, done shout outs or like been in engagement groups, gotten fake followers. You see the difference of that versus someone who's built like a fully organic, authentic audience in the community that's tied around that. And it produces better results over the long term. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I do, I have seen, so personally going through waves of belief on this, right? Where mm. there was a, a, a big thing where it's like, hey, in order to stand out and leverage new opportunities, you need to do this growth to, yeah. to mm-hmm. get into place. Sure. And then there, you know, people came in and started saying like, hey, this is affecting my account. Mm. What's interesting though, is I've seen accounts that have been arguably growing like like crazy where people are growing way more than they, I would ever have told a client to do back, you know, back when we were focusing purely on, hey, let's let's grow the authority of brands. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, I've seen accounts revive and and go, f- you know, really strong viral content, no matter how much fake stuff they've had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, what's interesting is Mr. Beast. Obviously, you know who Mr. Beast is. Of course. He's uh, I would say probably one of the masters of our generation of creating mm-hmm. uh, highly engaging and high retention content. Yeah. And uh, he said on um, Colin and Samir's podcast, mm-hmm. which is a phenomenal podcast for anyone that's uh, interested in creating content and yeah, actually creating a brand great. online. And uh, I think he's done three of them now with them. The most recent one, he said this. He's like, look, you know, everyone always comes back and they're like, the algorithm's broken, this and that. Yeah. And there's a, and are cool. you in the meta group, uh, meta creators group uh, on Facebook? There's a, a, a group called the meta creators group. It's okay. basically, they invited just creators to come in. Mm-hmm. And I laugh every time I look in there. They, everyone's like, the algorithm hates me. The algorithm's stupid. This and that. It's like mm-hmm. the reality is, as Mr. B said, it's your content. Right. You create high quality content. You follow the principles you're talking about. I guarantee that you're, you're, you just don't know how to make content. Yep. Yep. At the end of the day, that's it. Um, I know the exact quote that you're talking about. We say often as well and uh, talk to our team and clients about that. But essentially what Mr. B said is replace algorithm with content. It's like the algorithm sucks. The algorithm is holding my content back. It's like, no, my content sucks. Yeah, yeah. My content's <laughs> holding me back. Um, that's that's really what it is. It's just your content sucks, dude. Like, that's it. You just got to improve it and you will tap into and see results. And it does snowball over time as well. Uh, a big part of the process, and I'd say the main purpose behind the secondary accounts is just to do more volume at the end of the day. We look at every single post we put out as another app bat to go viral. If you look at the insights behind all short form content, All of them are being served to non-followers or for you page or people who have not seen you before. They don't already follow you. And so it's all opportunities and assets and billboards to just get in front of new people and bring more people into your world, more people into your space. Um, So we generally see best success by just doing more volume. And we've posted uh, or we've tested posting volumes at the low end of one time per day, at the high end of 12 times per day uh, per account and across platforms. And we see best results between three to six posts per day per account on platforms. So we'll usually have all of our accounts across the board uh, between that posting volume. And then we just only create secondary accounts to continue to post more content. And that's really it. And the more content you post across socials, the more exposure you're going to get. And then you back that up with quality content and you're going to have great results. You can't polish a turd. So if you're just like throwing shit content everywhere, it's not going to perform. Right. So the quality needs to be there as well. And that's why I think that there is a fallacy with a lot of people 
they think that maybe they tested doing a higher volume of posting at one time. They didn't see good, as good of results, maybe even uh, decrease. And it is because the quality like degraded at scale. Like if you try to do more content and you didn't keep that quality up, um, then yeah, you're not gonna see as good of results versus, versus the quality remains and you 3X your content, a lot of time you'll more than 3X your growth because that content is there to where if the average views per post just remain exactly the same, theoretically you should 3X. But then again, the more you post, the more chances you have of that content going viral or just performing way more above average and being the, some of those outlier posts that can really snowball everything. And so you're putting yourself in better chances of that happening as well, the more times that you post, which is why, let's say you go from posting one time per day to three times per day on your accounts, a lot of the time you're gonna grow even more than three times faster by doing that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, you see uh, I, I see it with creators. Like Alex, uh, so there's a, uh, a software I used to call, use called uh, Rebel IQ, I believe. Mm. And uh, what it would do is it would track every creator. Basically, you put in your list of 40 people and then it'll mm -hmm. track everything they're doing. And it just looked at like Hermosi and, and uh, Grant and all mm -hmm. the people that are the biggest in the space. And yep. it's just the volume. Mm -hmm. They're posting six yep. to 10 times a day on, on every platform. And it's like, you wonder why these guys are the biggest, fastest growing people. It's just right. volume. Right, yeah, just look at who is at the top and just do what they're doing. And all of them are doing volume. It, it really is a big key. Um, and Hermosi talks about this on the one of the calls that he had with Grant Cardone. Grant just said, like, dude, you just need to do more. Like, that's it. And so Hermosi talks about when they did that, uh, after that call, they doubled their content and then they saw their growth double. Then they tripled their content and they saw their growth triple and they just continued to do more volume. Uh, last um, that I heard, they're doing now a thousand posts per month. So we got to get them to the next that next <laughs> level. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a volume game for sure. But also quality is still super important as well. So we're out here in Vegas right now. Obviously, I'm from Vegas. You're mm -hmm. you know you're you've been ar around a lot of places. But uh, the 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 thing that I use as an analogy is if you go to a slot machine, you mm -hmm. put a quarter and you pull in the slot machine, you have a chance to win whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? Um, what if that slot, what if that casino for a day was free where you could play every single slot machine and you have a chance at potentially winning? That's mm. what social media is right now. And and really, you have, it's free to post. Uh, you can post as much as you want. And every single post has the potential to go viral. Mm -hmm. So it's giving you the ability, if you have thousands of posts happening every single month, you have a much uh, a larger ability to, to win. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing is I don't believe, and maybe you disagree with me on this, I don't believe that's going to be the case forever. Because what's mm -hmm. going to happen is is everything happens in cycles and trends. Sure. And so with, yeah. with content right now, if people are going to discover, you know, in part two to you and other people who are doing this, that that mass scale is actually a, 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 an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so that we're going to cycle where a lot of people are going to be posting and then uh, that the platform is going to have to find ways to counteract that, mm -hmm. right? And so what I foresee happening is, is, is platforms following the suit of Twitter where you're going to have basically pay to play. I mean, Meta's doing it right now, but platforms are already doing it and they're gonna throttle the ability to post unless it's paid on, this is just my prediction, right? I don't sure. have any insight on this, but there's gonna be a, a thing when eventually these platforms are gonna be charging you to post to have an account or they'll limit what you can do with it. Mm -hmm. So that being said, um, now is definitely the opportunity to do this. We're in a short window of time when a, a solution like what you're offering is even possible. Mm -hmm. And so for those that really want to maximize in business and actually grow their brand online, I think they should be leveraging this like right away. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's logic behind that theory. And if that does play out, it could be a role. Um, but we want to just be innovative, fluid, amiable with the approach. So we'll always figure out like, what is that edge? What is that next thing to just create more growth and exposure? Um, but to your point, this is an incredible opportunity that could have a short window of time. And it's also, regardless of that alone, you still have first movers advantage if you hop in and you do this now because the majority of people still have not. And it's not something that uh, really could happen even, I would say, two years ago, uh, two and a half years ago. Now, um, today and present, all the platforms have really optimized around short form, put short form a lot. Reels weren't even a thing on Instagram three years ago. Um, so the ability to do the volume of content that we do through short form, it is a window of opportunity. It's also first mover's advantage. You're not late, you're early if you start this now. And it becomes the ultimate competitive edge as well because this is incredibly hard to do. So a lot there's very few people that have done it successfully. But once you do it, this is an asset that can grow to a level of doing more than 100 million plus views per month and even 200 million plus views per month, which is just insane. We've hit that now four times 
uh, with four separate clients just this past year in 2023 with media scaling. And when we're hitting view counts, doing more than 100 million views per month across all the secondary accounts, like the growth is just nutty. Like it, they're growing multiple six figures uh, per month of followers and subscribers across the board when you're at that level. Yeah, uh, I think that the it's definitely powerful. Um, and I know you have obviously your guarantee up to 150 million mm -hmm. views per month. Um, are you selected with the clients you take on and uh, mm -hmm. or can anyone work with you? Yes. So as far as the top level uh, done for you guarantee, we are selective on that process because there's a lot that goes into it. We have a team of 10 to 15 people generally behind each client to fulfill that. Uh, but we have had uh, just a lot of people coming to us who are wanting help um, anywhere from just getting started all the way up to you know millions and millions of followers creating content for a long time. So we have rolled out additional offers and ways that we can help people. On the entry level, our mission of the company is just to create uh, impact, work with the world's top thought leaders, experts, entertainers, and help them get their content in front of as many people as possible with the core belief it's one of the greatest ways to create lasting positive impact for generations, right? So uh, a big way that we can do that as well is just by helping more people, especially getting started. There's so many people who have a lot of expertise, who have a lot of incredible knowledge or entertainment to share, and they just haven't created that platform yet. So we have at the entry, we've created a free mini course called Two Billion View Secrets, just sharing everything that we've done, generating billions of views on organics. We included a lot of our best stuff in there. Um, and so people can opt in for that if they're just getting started. And then we also have different paid tiers of programs, coaching, uh, and even like lower level done for you services as well for creators who are earlier on in their journey to where we can still really help move the needle for them uh, just anywhere, depending on where they're at, if they're creating content or have the goal of starting to create content. There's a creator, uh, Tyler Olivia, Olivia Vera, Olivia, Olivia Vera. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, sounds familiar. So I'd probably know him if I saw him. Yeah, he did a, so a couple interesting uh, videos he's done. He did this one of uh, a couple in Vegas, actually, uh, exposing like uh, uh, human trafficking here. Mm. And then he did another one about gambling with the, with the tat about guy, you know, the guy who's got the tattoos on his face that um, uh, Nikki, he had like, he made apparently like tricked the casinos into making tens of millions of dollars. Uh, no, I haven't you know? seen him. Cool. Oh. So uh, anyways, Tyler, his model is interesting. So at the end of every YouTube video, long form video he posts, he uh, says, hey, uh, anyone who takes this, clips up por uh, portions of this, puts it on your social media. As long as you tag me, the person who gets the most views the next seven days, I'll give 500 bucks. Mm. So it's actually nice. an organic way for any creator to actually have content or, or have a following. Mm. Or maybe you don't. You can have a model like that where you encourage your current audience to post because it's not real for everyone to go and have, mm -hmm. you know, 40 accounts with all this stuff. In a case like you, obviously, a higher end clients can work with you. Mm -hmm. But um, just wanted to mention that organic strategy I've seen. Yeah, it's smart. It's definitely smart. Um, I mean, the more, again, the more posts that you're getting out there, the better. And that is something to where a lot of people come to us who are just getting started and they want a full account network of 40 accounts posting. And it's something you have to build up to. You know, you can't just get there overnight. Having a larger content database is really important. We generally look for those creators to have 50 plus hours of content already ready to go. Um, and then they're consistently creating new content ongoing as well. Um, but you can still massively move the needle just with your main socials. And it comes back to just having the right systems in place. When we look at it as we're really having three pillars of pillar one is production, pillar two is editing, pillar three is distribution, right? So the production is the content creation of like the actual filming side, then the editing is adding the editing on top, distribution is the account management posting it out. Um, a lot of people try and do all three. You should focus in on the production. You should not do the editing. You should not do the account management. That's going to give yourself a full-time job if you're going to do this properly. And it's very easy um, and cost-effective, really cheap, honestly, to outsource if you know how to do it properly. So that's something that uh, we talk about a lot, like with Short Form Mastery is, is one of our um, mentorship programs. But we give people the systems to where if you just focus in on the production, you can take three to six hours of filming and have that turn into 300 to 600 posts per month to where it doesn't need to take a lot of time for you. And let's like, just get started on your main socials. You should be posting at volume. Like I mentioned, don't just do one post a day, do anywhere between two to six posts per day. And if you start, you do that on your main socials, you have uh, great quality content. You're using hooks. The editing is good. 
uh, and then you're just consistent with it is the huge key. Like the consistency with the volume is so key. Maybe you have some slower growth, but it snowballs a lot faster than you think. And you can really move the needle and take off with just your main socials. So if that's more the route that you're uh, at currently, like just focus on your main socials, you can still build a great quality, like big audience there. And then once you have the database size to start to really scale up, incorporate more of these secondary accounts, then let's, let's scale, let's amplify. But it's not something that you just jump into overnight. Now, you mentioned those three pillars, but I think there's a fourth thing that, that you have to be doing, and I'd love to kind of hear about this. It's tracking, mm. right? So one of the things that Mr. Beast talks about mm -hmm. is how he and his 20 friends would sit and they track everything from yeah. literally the, the thumbnail click-through rate retention. What are you doing to track the process, if anything at all? And, mm -hmm. and how does that affect the actual content? Yeah, we have incredible tracking dashboards. We'll, we'll show it to clients or people who book calls with us. And it's, it's super impressive. Um, and the way that we've done that, I'm kind of out of the loop on the process, but we just have an incredible team who's built these API scrapers um, that will track all the views and all the growth across all the accounts we're managing. And then we built a, a very detailed, uh, just using Google Sheets, analytics dashboard that just shows everything that we do, all the transparency, all the results, uh, the growth throughout the process. And then our team is involved, like the account managers, the team leaders. Uh, we have them checking out the uh, analytics and the audiences um, and the insights per the posts, especially top performing posts. We'll always look at that and just reverse engineer it, like understand why did this work, you know, and how can we replicate this process further? And uh, at this point, we've posted more than 180,000 times across all of our client accounts. We've tracked it all. A lot of those are, it's really like 80-20 rule, like 20% of the posts have produced 80% of the results of the billions of views. Um, and it's just reverse engineering top winning content. Like look at the hook, what was in the content itself. The hook is the audio version of like what's being said, if there is something being said at the start of the video, but it's also the visual component as well. Um, that can like hook people in to make them want to watch the remainder of the video. So a lot of the time you can just reverse engineer content, like go to any account, go to any channel and look at the videos that have that are the outlier videos that have gone way above average in terms of views and exposure and use that as a source to uh, make your own version. And you can even just like straight up have the same exact hook at the start and then make the rest your own. You should not like copy and paste someone else's video, but that hook has already proven to work and go viral. And if it's something that's on brand with what you do and you have expertise or knowledge or whatever to back it up, then you should use that hook yourself because it's already proven to work so well also. And there's just a lot you can do to just study top performing content. Um, it's like free education essentially, and then go out and apply that for yourself and your own content. Yeah, that's cool. You know, uh, based on the data that you've seen and kind of what you're observing in the marketplace, what what kind of content is viral worthy right now? Mm -hmm. and, and what are you seeing actually pop off? Yeah, I mean, you can really have effective content doing just about any of the styles. So like talking head is what we call it to where you're talking into the camera. Usually it's like motivational, inspirational, educational. Uh, then there's podcasts, which obviously perform incredibly well and give you, they're just like a seamless, like fluid way to create content. It feels easy. It's enjoyable. You connect with more people and then you could clip that up into short form. Uh, then you have blog content, which performs incredibly well also. And uh, the standard and the bar keeps raising further and further to where more vlogs are, you know, Mr. Beast has really pioneered that path and people are just like taking it to next level type of content. Um, People do streaming and you can have like, if you're a Twitch streamer, just a streamer in general, that can still take uh, and be repurposed into short form content. Uh, on the street content performs so well. I mean, it just, it goes crazy viral of people going out in public and we'll just walk up to people and uh, ask them funny questions or like offer like prizes, giveaways. And Mr. Beast also pioneered a big part of that. Reaction content is performing incredibly well across the board with our clients also. Uh, someone who has done an amazing job like pioneering this is Brett Cooper. Um, if you look at her YouTube channel, she started about two and a half years ago or so, and maybe it's coming up on three years. She's grown almost 4 million subscribers like from a brand new channel. All of her content is reaction content to where she is just reacting to another piece of content that was posted from somewhere else and giving her own take on it. And then you can still have that be tailored towards your brand and still like through your take, you're still providing value to your audience as well. So um, there's a lot of ways to do this. You can also even set up, I, I know people in our clients will do like mock podcasts 
to where maybe they don't have their own podcast, but it's something that feels easy and seamless for them to do to create content. So they'll just have someone on their team uh, either in person or hop on Zoom and prep a bunch of questions and then do a podcast just for their own content as well. The biggest key is doing what you enjoy and removing friction. A lot of people, if they feel like, ah, it's like, I don't want to create content. I don't really enjoy it. Uh, it's because you're not doing it in the right way. It's like, I have never met anyone who fully doesn't enjoy doing podcasts or not podcasts, but just creating content when it's in the right format. Like most people enjoy doing podcasts because it's just having great conversations, getting connected with more people. So you have to find what works with you. Uh, Gary Vee has a great example of this. Like uh, he wanted to remove friction. So he literally just hired people to follow him around all day. And it's like, he just continued living his life, but just had cameras there as well. Uh, and that was what he did to remove friction from the process to make the content creation sustainable for him. Right. So, uh, you just have to learn what you enjoy, learn the type of content that you enjoy and remove friction. That way it can be consistent for you, which is again, the big key. If, if you're like on one week off the next, like posting one day, not posting the next day, you're not going to get nearly as good of results versus the person who's dialed. They're on a cadence every week. They're creating content, uh, long form, if not more every day, they're posting multiple times per day. Like that is that consistency with quality is really, really key. The question was like, what makes viral content? You just listed off every type of content. <laughs> it all works. They're all viral. You know, there's not just like one size fits all. It, it, so it just comes down to like who you are, what you want to do, what kind of content you want to create. Yeah, I think that's, I think that I love that. And I think that's the most important thing that you kind of said at the end there, which was like, what actually is real for you to do? Mm -hmm. See, for, for you, dude, like coming on this podcast, like one thing that, that, that I've observed uh, talking with you for the last hour here is you speak in clips. Like your mind mm -hmm. is thinking, how can I create a, a one minute, 45 second clip out of, out of this question, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, which is phenomenal. It means your brain is thinking about this constantly and content. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether you're conscious of that or unconscious, <laughs> but it's very impressive. And with that being said, I think that every every person should be getting on as many podcasts as they can. Mm -hmm. If you heck even create your own podcast and just you know yeah. like what you said, mm -hmm. sit down in your living room and, and have your girlfriend or, or wife ask you questions. Yeah. You know? So yeah. I mean, it just getting on podcasts. It's I I have a hard time believing uh, most people. It's it's just an enjoyable thing and it's easy to do. And um, you're doing people a favor. If they have a newer podcast, people just want guests on. Yep. So all you have to do is just reach out. And a lot of the time you don't need to like have this huge backing or huge following, um, but just use that. Just be willing to get on podcasts in general. Production quality does matter. Uh, you don't want to do like a Zoom podcast and both hosts like have no mic and the lighting's off and it's like, that's not going to perform well. Um, so you want like some level of production with it. If it's a digital podcast, like set up your own studio uh, we have a full walkthrough on that in our two billion view secrets and help people, but you want to have like some layer layer of production, but it can be digital podcasts. It could be in person and then just reach out to podcast hosts and you'll be surprised at how many you can get on. And it's a really great vehicle to just create content for yourself and drive a lot more exposure and build relationships too. Yeah, totally. Like the truth yeah. is how, in what world would you or I ever been able to carve out 45 minutes an hour to right. just talk to each other? Right. <laughs> yeah. Like it doesn't happen. Yeah. So I, I love podcasts for that reason. Um, you know, uh, on that, right. So what's, what's the future look like for you? How do you see that content changing podcast? For example, there's, there's, there's more, it feels like everyone's creating a podcast, everyone's mm -hmm. dog and, and mom and whatever. So what does that look like? And what do you think the future of content and social media is going to be? Yeah. I mean, there's so many routes that it could go. AI is going to play a massive role and it's coming fast as well. Right. Uh, we already have people who are coming to us and they're creating, incredibly good content with their AI cloned where it's not really them and you can't even tell. Um, so that's going to play a big role in coming to the landscape and uh, we'll see how that shapes as well. Uh, and then when it comes to just content creation in general, I still believe like we're early. Um, it's, it's here to stay. The landscape is always changing. It's always evolving, but don't feel like you're too late and let that be the thing that holds you back from starting to create content, like just get started. And then it comes down to a lot of Right now, today, what's working so incredibly well is what we just talked about for the last hour of doing volume, systemizing it, having good editing on top. Um, but if you um, just find an approach that works well for you, remove the friction, make it consistent, make it sustainable, um, and then you just keep going. You have not just a one-month mindset with this. It's like, hey, I'm going to create content for one month. If I don't get 50,000 followers, I'm going to give up, which so many people do. 
but just go into it. And it's like, I'm just going to do this for the next five years and I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to be consistent with it. That long-term commitment is so incredibly important. And if you have a five-year vision with this, you'll be shocked of what can happen in even six months or one year if you just have that layer of consistency. And then once it's there, once an audience starts to build, once you really see momentum, the amount of benefit that comes from it is just insane. It opens up so many doors for you, the leverage behind it, your marketing costs go way down. You don't have to spend all on ads or your ads perform better. If you are running ads, there's just so many layers of benefits to having an audience and having a personal brand. So that really is it. Just go into it with a long-term view create content that is quality, that is frictionless for you, that you enjoy doing, and then just have consistency and commitment with it. That's really it. So one thing I've seen with uh, a lot of people that have agencies and have their own companies or they're doing stuff, they're not actually doing the product themselves. Mm. Um, do you use this product yourself and, uh, and, and are you getting results with it? Yeah, so I just started my personal brand, I believe three weeks ago. So it's new to it. Up until this point, we were the hidden secret behind personal brands, um, but it got to the point where it's like, you got to do this, you know, and I have wrestled with this for a while to where a long time, like I didn't want to be like a content creator. I didn't want a big following. I wanted to be very successful, but not necessarily so far in the public eye and just have more so private success. Um, but the benefits outweigh the cons, in my opinion. And um, now that we have the systems in place, it's like, you, you should be doing what you preach and, and what you do yourself. Uh, so I just got started and um, the socials are small, but they're, they're growing. It's only three, maybe four weeks in. Um, so just wait six months and see where we're at. But again, I'm telling you, when you start this process, the month one is always going to be the slowest. Month two is going to feel slow too. Uh, we've managed a lot of accounts to where the growth is really slow for even three months, four months, but then month four, it just hits. You have one video go viral and then everything snowballs from there. And we've had accounts jump from like a few thousand followers to 50,000 plus followers, literally within 30, 45 days, right? So it goes back to that layer of consistency. Um, it's just get started, be consistent with it. And you can be shocked of what will happen in even six months. Usually like we tailor our targets around three months because that's how long it usually takes to like really get momentum going. Uh, and then within six months, like you can build a pretty good size audience when you follow these systems and, and everything that we're talking about. Um, so it doesn't take long either in the long-term scheme of things. Cool, man. Dude, thanks for coming on. Anything else you want to share? Um, yeah, I mean, we have free resources. If that's okay, I mentioned 2 yeah. billion view secrets. Um, you can go to go.mediascaling.com forward slash secrets. We have a lot of our best stuff in there, hundreds of viral hook frameworks, our posting scheduler, a lot about our systems. Um, and then you can just check me out on any socials. It's Logan Forsyth across the board. Uh, our company is mediascaling.com. So if you feel like uh, you are interested in creating and scaling content, we can help. I think uh, today's podcast was some of the most valuable information on how to actually create content, whether you're just a creator starting out or you're someone who's uh, looking to to really take your uh, your online brand to the next level. I've been in the this uh, social media world for, like I said, six or seven years now, and it's it's rare that you see an opportunity like this come up. So uh, definitely connect with Logan and uh, and let him know where you found him. And uh, until next time, uh, we'll see you guys. Thank you, brother. Thanks, man. Yeah, that was awesome.